This video is all about safely backpacking on the Lost Coast of California. This is a very unique hike along the ocean, and there's three areas along the length of the hike that are impacted by tides. You have to make sure you're only hiking that area when the tide is lower than three feet. So uh, let's start out by looking at the route here and seeing where the areas are that uh, we have to be concerned about. So here's the trip that we planned. First off, there's some important phone numbers here that you should give to your emergency contacts in case something bad happens. They can call these. If they can't get a hold of you, they can call these numbers and, and get some help. But we decided to hike the Lost Coast from the southern end up to the uh, northern end. So the southern end starts at Black Sands Beach by Shelter Cove. And the, nor the end of the trail is up at Matoli Beach up to the north. Now this uh, map is flipped on its side to make it easier to read. But So we're gonna, on the first day we're going to be starting in the afternoon at Black Sands Beach. We, we have a driver so um, the driver is going to drop us off at Black Sands Beach and then uh, a couple days later or three days later pick us up at Matoli Beach. So we don't have to worry about shuttling. So we're scheduled to arrive at Black Sand Beach in the afternoon on the first day. And that's, this year it's going to be uh, August 26th, and I'll explain why in a minute. And then uh, the first afternoon we're going to hike up to Gitchell Creek, which is just before the first high tide areas that are impassable at high tide. So over here is a, a BLM map, Bureau of Land Management, and here's the trailhead here. And then uh, Gitchell Creek is right here. So there's water here from the creek, and we're going to camp right in this area. So that's day one. And it's about, uh, I think it's about four miles. Yeah, you know, it's actually 3.7 miles, yeah. So that's day one. Now on day two, we're going to hike from Gitchell Creek to Randall Creek. So here's Gitchell Creek. And we're going to hike just to just before the next high tide impacted zone. So that's a total of 12.6 miles, so that's pretty far. Uh, Important uh, feature here is let's go ahead and look at the tide chart for that day. So the first day we don't care about the tides because we're not going to be hiking in an area that is impacted by tides. So we can get here. We can start in the afternoon and we don't have to worry about the tides. But the next next day we have to get past this, this uh, impacted area here before the tides get too high. So here's a tide chart with a uh, threshold of three feet. So anytime the, the tide is above three feet it's going to be in red. So you can see here that um, low tide is just right around 6 a.m. Uh, so we need to be starting as early as we can on this day because um, we want to be hiking when the tide is low so when we pass this area we're not impacted by the, by the ocean. So since uh, twilight starts at 5 a.m. our plan is to get up, is to get up at around 5 a.m. and then leave camp, just have a cold breakfast, leave camp around uh, 5.30 as soon as it's light, basically, and start hiking as soon as we can to get it past this area. So by having it on a low tide, that means it's going to be easier hiking. Hopefully a lot of it will be uh, sandy beach instead of rocks. So we'll see when we get there. These dates here that I've discussed here, August 26th through um, the 20, uh, 28th, are the only days in this you know summer to fall period where the tide was actually negative at a reasonable time of the day. So that's when we pick these dates. You have to get the permit about, I think it's either six months or a year, and a, a year in advance. And they go really fast, so you have to get up early and get on them right away. So, Okay, so then we're going to camp at Randall Creek this is the, the second night. And then we'll go on to the next day. Oh, before I stop though, so here's the impacted area here on the BLM map. So as long as we get past here by around uh, 10 o'clock, then we'll be okay. So that gives us, uh, you know, over five hours to cover four miles. So that should be pretty easy, actually. This is about a four four point uh, two mile length here. Then we have another eight miles of hiking, so we can take our time and get over here. So, so here's day three. Again, the low tide. Low tide is a little bit later this morning, 6:49 a.m. But again, we're going to start as early as we can because we have to get past two tide areas on this day. So the first one is right after our campsite and that's four miles long like the other one about the same length. But there's another point here around Punta Gorda just past Punta Gorda that's also impacted. 
So to get to Punta Gorda, past both of these is about six miles. So if we start hiking at five, and the high tide again, uh, the, the tide above three feet, which is when we <coughs> don't want to be on those uh, impacted areas, is around 10 o'clock. So that gives us, again, five hours to hike six miles. That shouldn't be that big of a deal. There is a bale out here. If we can't get around this point, we can hike up this road and hike to the end of the trail. So that's a bailout. That's a, a good feature of this hike in general is that you can hike um, up these draws and get up to a fire road that's up here that's not on this map right now. But it is possible to get up, escape from the beach and get up to the fire road. Okay, so in any case, in fact, here, here's a spur right here that takes you all around this uh, impacted area. So, uh, Again, here's the tide, so here's the last period we have to get across. And then once we, we plan getting here around 11 o'clock in the morning or so forth. So, so that's our plan of our trip. And then I'll have some more, uh, follow this up with actual footage on the trip. And we'll see how it turned out. Wish us luck. We, did, we planned well, but there's always Mother Nature involved. So we have to have some luck and good, uh, good uh, strategy on making sure we're safe along the coast. All right, we're here at the trailhead. You are here. We're going to be hiking up to here tonight. The next day, we're hiking all the way up here to the next uh, tide area. And then the last day, we're hiking all the way up to the Molote campground up here. So here's the beach. We're going to start walking along that beach pretty soon. There's a trail here down to the, <coughs> down to the ocean. All right, Pacific Ocean looks great. Just keep it on your left. Keep going and we'll make it. Alright, we made it to the first notch. We're headed. Propose a toast. I do. I propose a toast. All right. To what? Uh, my toast is to you, Dad, for uh, leading the way on planning this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming, but we made it. Yeah. All right. You did go on the uh, low tide hike at Point Reyes. So. I did. Yes. Actually, out. don't uh, turn your back on the, on the ocean. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. So we got to get around that point before the waves come in. So yeah. Let's, let's get on it. All right, we made it to Gitchell Creek, our first campsite. And we found a nice protected area here with some logs. Got a good stump here. We can do our gravity water filter. So Gitchell Creek is right over here. Let's zoom in on that. And it's got a good flow. This is August 26, 2022. It's got a good flow. It's got a pond over here. We're not going to take water out of that pond. We're going to go up the creek a little bit and get some water so we can filter it for drinking. And there's the ocean. The Great wide Pacific. There go the seagulls. So this is the beach at Gitchell Creek. We're going to Check out the water. Feels good. I'm not turning my back on the ocean, so I'm <laughs> backing up. All right, we did see a sea lion out here earlier, but I don't see it right now. All right, it's about well, it's 6:20 now, but by about 5:30 we had our tent set up. There's three of us on the trip, so we have one two-person tent and one one and a half-person tent. And we're the only ones here at this campsite. Most people hike north to south, so we're hiking south to north. So a nice little campsite. We got a place to 
cook over here out of the wind and a log to sit on so that's all we need all right here's our gravity filter system sawyer just like we used at beetle bug lake we found a piece of driftwood about five feet tall and it gives the full head to filter into the into the clean bag and we'll have clean water to drink with dinner and tomorrow All right, well, it's just after six o'clock, I mean, almost six o'clock. So we're not leaving quite as early as we hope, but let's hopefully you can see, I'll turn this light out. It's starting to get light out there. Sunrise is around a little after six. I think there's a lighthouse down there. Could just be the shelter cove. All right, so we're getting packed up and we're heading out to beat the, beat the tide. Bye-bye, Gitchell Creek. All right, so after the initial easy beach walking, we've been walking over these rocks for the last 45 minutes. And we got another hour probably to go, so. This is what they warn you about. You're basically rock hopping. So you really want to use uh, trekking poles. You have four points of contact, or at least three at a time. I don't think this is really safe unless you're happy, so that's what I recommend. All right, another hour and we'll be off of the uh, first tide impacted zone. All right, we're off the beach. We climbed up the bluff and we're hiking on the plane on the way to second breakfast. Woo! All right, we took a break after the beach excitement under the bluff and we stopped for second breakfast. Hot breakfast uh, halfway through the morning here. All right, we reached uh, Randall Creek. It was kind of hidden. Glad we kept going. So it leads out into the ocean. And here comes a group with a dog and eight people. And we're going to camp down on the beach. Uh, there are some campsites up here, but the water is down on the beach. So you can get water over there probably, but uh, it's pretty steep over there. So it's much better to get it on the beach at Randall Creek. So here's our campsite at uh, Randall Creek. We're all set up, we're eating dinner, and over here, a beautiful sunset. That's a great way to end the day. Alright, 6, 618, so just after sunrise we broke camp, starting at 4.30, and we're going to hike around this point here and then it should be easy hiking for a while. We need to get past four miles of, uh, of um, impacted zone by the tide and then a couple more later. We gotta jump this stream. This is Randall Creek. All right, easy beach hiking. Go for it. All right, off in the distance there is the impassable coast where there's a landslide. So we're gonna be pulling up the uh, Cooksey Creek Spur, which is right at the top of this hill. We see a post up there. Someone's been camping up there. So we finished this nasty uh, rock rock uh, hopping over here and now we're going to be up on up on a trail that'll be nice all right so when you get to the top of the bluff you see these new brand new lct signs so that's the south so when you get to the top of the bluff turn left and you'll keep going north so it looks like they rerouted the trail all along this section because it was just too rough down below so climb the hill and walk on the hillside 
LCT north we go. All right, so there's no problem following the trail. It's very well maintained and switchbacks and everything coming down this hill. So the worry about getting around the uh, landslide area is not existent anymore. So I think this is Sea Lion Gulch and then we're gonna be walk on there to that far point over there. That's where the lighthouse is. All right, when you hit the Sea Lion Gulch, which is right over there, got a heck of a steep trail up under the bluff. And over here, let's see Sea Lion Rock. Somewhere over to the right is a lighthouse. All right, we made it to, there's the lighthouse, woo! So it's after 10.30, so there's no way we're gonna get around the points after the lighthouse. We're gonna have to walk up the road back to the trailhead, but that's okay. It's been a great trip so far, and it's like it's gonna finish up even better. All right, we made it to Trail's End. <laughs> we had to go on the road because we couldn't pass the impassable sections in time for the tide. So we climbed a thousand feet and went down a thousand feet and we're tired. <laughs> anyway, that's how we did the Lost Coast and I'll uh, wrap it up with it going over our few details of our route. Here's a quick recap. We started at Black Sand Beach and in the afternoon we hiked to Gitchell Creek and camped there. Then early in the morning, because the tides were early all this whole trip, we passed the uh, first low tide area and went all the way to Randall Creek. Next morning we passed the low tide area here. And then by the time we got to here, the, the lighthouse, it was after 10.30, which was when uh, the three foot tide was. But it turns out that these points right here, over here, can actually be passed at five and a half feet. I've only found that out after we got back from the trip. So as you can see, the highest tide of the afternoon was 5.3. So any, any time in this period, we could have easy, we could have uh, passed these points and got here. Instead, we ended up hiking up this road, which was really a grind. It's like a thousand feet climb over to two miles and then another thousand feet back down over two miles. So that was really not the fun way to end the trip. And I wish I had known that uh, these last two points could be passed at five and a half feet. So that's a good clue for you when you're planning your trip. And um, have fun on the Lost Coast. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out and keep looking up.